why is it that sometimes we seek wisdom but it is denied to us and this is more for myself and inshallah a point of reflection for the rest of us one of the reasons that i find when i look at hadith as to why hikmah is denied is this excessive love for pleasure for dunya not to fulfill a physical need but to lust for it with excessiveness so that one is obsessed and addicted to physical pleasure you know in salatul asr we just prayed salatul asr here the dua of salatul asr we recite wa a'udhu bika min nafsin la tashba and i seek refuge with you o allah from a nafs that is never satisfied and never satiated no matter no matter how much it eats it wants more no matter how much it indulges it wants more we have one hadith from imam as-sadiq alayhi salam he says allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad he says man zahida fi dunya athbata allah al hikmata fi qalbihi wa antaqa biha lisanihi whoever abstains from this world whoever does not take from this world more than what he or she needs then Allah plants wisdom in his heart again plant he gives it root in his heart and once he does it he makes him speak wisdom through his tongue notice again Allah makes him speak he brings it out on his tongue but the condition is zuhud and in the hadith of Mi'raj we have that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his Habib that oh my Habib when a person hungers himself and keeps his stomach empty and does not indulge in it excessively I give him wisdom and this wisdom becomes a nur and a burhan it lights the way in front of him so that in life he knows exactly what he needs to do in life and it becomes a source of rahma and shafa for him and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَيَعْلَمُ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ يَعْلَمُ and then he begins to realize and know that which he would never have known otherwise in other words I give him knowledge which he could not have acquired through any other source وَيُبْصِرُ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ يبصر. and he begins to see and perceive things that he could never have perceived before and that is why when Ibrahim السلام, surrendered it himself completely, Allah says, وَلَكَدْ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ We showed Ibrahim so that he was able to see the kingdoms of the heavens and the earth. And we have this in hadith as well, that if it was not for the shayateen who are constantly going around you, and keeping you heedless so that you don't think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would have been able to see the angels in the heavens even while you were in this world. Right? And Allah says again in the Quran, Law ta'alamuna ilma al yaqeen, la tarawunna al jaheem. If you had ilm al yaqeen, you would have seen the fire of hell. You would have seen it here in this world. You wouldn't need to see it in the hereafter. So, this is one of the things that we need to be careful about. And there are so many ahadith in the interest of time that I will not uh, uh, list here. But essentially, we have one hadith that you know in summary it says that the heart can only hold wisdom when the stomach is not always full not that you don't eat but that you don't overfill it and eat with lust and it says when a person eats with lust and passion and desire for the sake of the pleasure of food then his heart vomits any wisdom in it it throws up wisdom <coughs> So this is very clear. Man akala ta'aman shahwatan haram Allahu ala qalbi al hikmah. Whoever eats food with shahwa, with lust, Allah makes wisdom haram on his heart. He will never acquire wisdom on his heart. It doesn't matter how much knowledge or how many years he studied or what he does. So this is the one reason that wisdom can be denied. The other reason, and we will conclude with that, is arrogance or takabbur. That a heart that is arrogant will not acquire wisdom and this we acquire in a beautiful hadith from our seventh imam imam musa al kadhim and again look at the analogy from you know awwaluna muhammad aw satuna muhammad akhiruna muhammad kulluna muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad Every one of them, when they speak of hikmah, their example is that of a tree being planted. 
of being established. Imam al Qadim says, he says, in order to plant a tree, the land has to be fertile and has to be soft. Many of you do gardening in summer, isn't it? When the ground is hard or there's a lot of clay, you can't plant anything. You have to dig it out, remove the clay and put soft soil in it. You have to soften the earth. That's when you can plant something in there. And the Imam says, Takabbur makes the heart hard. When the heart is like a solid smooth rock, wisdom can never be planted there. It requires tawabu or humility to soften the heart. And once it is softened, then Allah can plant his tree of wisdom where it is deserving. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense why arrogance would stop us. Because let's now conclude and bring this to a full circle. We said that hikmah is only given by Allah. We said it is a precious commodity. We says Allah gives it to only those who deserve it. We said wisdom is the ability to act in the most appropriate manner at every time and under every circumstance. We said this is not possible except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we said because we can't become Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only way possible is for us to surrender. When we have surrendered completely, then Allah acts through us. And because Allah is acting through us, that is why wisdom manifests itself through our actions. Now, if the ego stands in the way and there is an I, then how will Allah act through us? That submission will never happen. Because Allah wants to use me, use my tongue, use my hands, use my life to manifest himself and make me an ayat from ayatullah. So that people see Allah everywhere they turn. Wherever you turn, there you will see the face of Allah. That is what he wants. That everything, the sun, the moon and his ashraful makhluqat should be a mirror for his asma. But now for Allah to use me, I have to first remove that mind meds, I, that ego, that takabbur, that I am better than others. Ana khayrum minhu. I may not say it, but in my thoughts and in my actions. That is what is stopping from that, you know, state of surrender. The moment humility comes in and I don't take credit for anything in myself, whether it is knowledge, whether it is beauty, whether it is wealth, whether it is goodness, whether it is charity. And I give all credit to Allah and say in my physical self, I am just a glorified animal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is his grace that through the sadaqah of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and through his guidance, Alhamdulillahi ladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. All praise be to Allah who guided us to this. And we would never have been guided had Allah not guided us to this. So giving him all credit when I surrender with humility, that is when he's able to take over and say, now when you throw, I throw. When you see, it is I who is seeing. And so we begin to see now that wisdom requires me because I have a physical self and I have a spiritual self. When I focus on the physical, when I focus on addictions and desire, I blind my spiritual self. And so excessive indulgence in the world stops spirituality and stops wisdom growing in my heart. And arrogance stops it as well. When I fight these two and I move them to the side, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with wisdom. And the more wisdom we acquire, the more we will appreciate Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi A person who acquires Allah Muhammad A person who acquires wisdom in the true sense, even if he is not Muslim, he is not a Muslim, he will eventually come to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad because he will realize this they define wisdom itself. There is no higher level of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no one in the history of humanity who has acted with such aptness and such preciseness at every moment of their lives like these individuals.